So, when the back tell talkers, our session of now is now taking us to mathematics paper 2, what we're calling applied mathematics. And we are here to handle a new topic of Newton's law of motion, which is our second subunit in mechanics. Okay? So, what? Let's see what is under this. Okay? So, first and foremost, to make us understand this topic very well, we should first understand one concept that we are calling it a force. Okay? Because we are going to deal with the action of forces on a body. And then we shall relate it to the Newton's law. Okay? As a result of action of force. So before bringing the idea of the Newton's law, bringing how the force acts on the body, either changing its state of rest or uniform motion, let's first define what a force is. If at all they ask you, what is a force? What can be your answer? We can say a force, you can define a force in a number of ways. One can say a force is a push or pull on an object. Okay? So we can define a force as the push or pull or on an object. Like if I have something, I pull it or I push it. The pull or the push you are applying on the object is what we are calling it a force. Okay? Or another person, we can define it, is anything that exerts pressure. Okay? So, the next idea is that we can define force as anything that can exert pressure. That is also a basic definition of force. Is that okay? So now, after knowing what a force is, now let's analyze force in line with the Newton's law of motion. And then I can say, the idea of forces, the idea of force can best be analyzed under the Newton's law of motion as discussed below. Okay? So we are saying that this idea of Newton's law of motion, we can analyze it basing, the idea of forces can best be analyzed basing on the Newton's law of motion. Let's look at law number one. What is the Newton's second law? It states that a body continues in its state of rest or uniform motion unless acted upon by an external we are all aware that the Newton's first law of motion tells us that a body continues, a body will always continue in its state of rest or uniform motion unless, unless acted upon by external force. And from this, we shall realize that there are two things we are talking about. That the body will either try to remain at rest or it will continue moving unless an external force acts on it. It answers a number of questions when we go back to physics. Why is that? 
when you're sitting maybe in a car or a motorcycle and the person happens to start you find yourself moving behind that means that you are your body is still in a tendency or a reluctance of still remaining at a rest okay that is the first part that a body always will tend to remain in at a state of rest then it or you realize that when you're driving and then the brake is applied suddenly you jack forward why do you move forward that is also another part that the reason why you move forward is that the brake is applied to make you stop but your body has a tendency or a reluctance of continuing to move that is why you jack forward so there are two things that we are going to look at it there so let's look at case one for this section case one is a body at rest okay if the body is at rest we are saying that if if a force or forces acts on a body on a body and is said to remain at rest comma then the resultant forces in opposite directions are equal and opposite that if at all you apply a force on the body my either by pushing or pulling and it so happens that the body still remains at rest or what we are calling equilibrium what is very true is that the forces you are applying maybe in the other direction there is another force which is opposing it and it is equal to what you are applying that is why the body is not moving is remaining at rest okay then let's have a look at an example here given the forces acting on the body as shown below supposing i have this here i have this as 10 newtons i have this as my my 4 newtons i have my x here and then i have my y and then i have my 80 newtons and then they're saying that uh, find find the value of x and y if the system remains at a rest good so we are saying that in this example here, we have number of forces acting on this body here. But irrespective of all the forces acting on this body, the body is still at rest. Now, which value can you give to X and Y for that condition of remaining at rest to apply? Okay? To answer that, you should know one thing that what we said here that if forces act on the body and you say to remain at rest, then the resultant forces in opposite direction are equal and opposite. So what does that mean? That for this system to remain at rest, the resultant forces are equal and opposite. So we can say the forces in horizontal direction are equal and opposite. 
Like the reason why he's not moving even horizontally, the forces that are going this side are equal to the forces going the other side. Therefore, I can say forces that are going this side, I have x plus another one is 4. 4 is also pushing the other side. They are equal to the one pushing the other side, that is 10. Therefore, my x is 10 minus 4 and x equal to 6 newton. So that means that the reason why this body is not moving is because the value of x is equivalent to 6. Such that the forces going this side, they are 10, even the other one is equal to 10. And then if we look at it, the vertical direction, if we are to look at the vertical direction, We can say also upward forces are equal to downward forces. So the reason why there is even equilibrium in vertical direction it is because upward forces are equal to downward forces. So we can now say upward force we have y should be equal to downward force which is 8. Okay? And now we can make conclusion therefore the values the value of x and y are 6 newton and 8 newton respectively. And this is your answer. So, let's, after looking at this example here, let's meet in the second part where we're looking at it, when the body is now going to move.